How many times did, Penn, did you beat up on Michigan State when you were wrestling at Penn State? Uh, Michigan State? Yeah. It's countless. I don't, I don't know if they've ever Ooh, beat us, to be honest with you. Countless, yeah. bro. <laughs> there are a lot of wrestlers I feel like are delirious in their goals and like what they want. We're just so stubborn. That's the wrestler mindset. You transition from a highly intense athletic and academic area you had to go to the real world. It, guys, it's not that hard. Just everything you did in whatever sport it was, just transition that to your, your career. What was your toughest loss that taught you the most? Man, I'm gonna put this on record. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Gridiron and Growth Podcast, brought to you by Big Up Studios right here in Denver. We have literally Mr. Friend to the program, Benny, today. <laughs> We have a four-year wrestler at Penn State, someone who has also now made the transition from a collegiate athlete to a professional in the real world. Please welcome from First Trust Portfolios, Mark Friend. Mark, What's up, Mark? Big Ten, go Big Ten, go Big Ten, go Green. No doubt. I love it. <laughs> go Penn State. Yeah. How many times did, Penn, did you beat up on Michigan State when you were wrestling at Penn State? Michigan State? Yeah. It's countless now. I don't know if they've ever Ooh, beat us, to be honest with you. Countless, yeah. bro. <laughs> countless yeah. wins, you know? What Man. you got to say, Big Ten? I'm going to say, well, what are we doing the football field? Okay, no, we're on, a, we're, we're on the mat. We're bringing it to the mat here <laughs> on this it. episode. And and what many people might know, not know, is I that wrestling's my favorite sport. I mean, right. I, wrestling made me a better football player. It was the first thing that took me from 220 pounds and squishy cheeks <laughs> down to about 170, but then, you know, yeah. building it back up. But you did something I thought, well, I'll never do that. It's way too hard. You wrestled in college, Division One wrestler. Yeah. And you wrestled at Penn State, one of the most storied wrestling programs in the mm -hmm. history mm -hmm. of our nation. What was high school to college like for you? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a huge jump. And that's like no surprise in <laughs> any sport, right? Like whether you're going to high school, to college. But I think in wrestling, it's a whole nother ball game just because of the physical aspect, the mental aspect and all that. But Man, I'll tell you what, I was, I'll tell a quick short story. I was, it was the most humbling experience in my entire life. And that's no surprise, but it's like, I was a top, I'll give myself a quick plug real quick, but I promise you I'm very humble because you asked. <laughs> it's like, I was going from the number 16 recruit my senior year of high school in the country. And I sat on the bench for three years when I went to Penn State. It's like, what just happened? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's how big of a jump it was just to go to the college level. It's why a lot of wrestlers redshirt their freshman year. That's that year you kind of get some practice under your belt. You don't do official competitions. You kind of just take your licks until you kind of like mentally and physically graduate to that level. And then eventually, hopefully, you break the starting lineup. What did it feel like, though, sitting? Yeah. What did you tell yourself in that time? I mean, sometimes a lot of wrestlers, I feel like, are delirious in their goals and like what they want. We're just so stubborn and, you know, thick headed. So I don't think I ever questioned stopping or. Like, I wasn't going to reach my goals. Like, I wasn't going to be the starting guy. It was just like, you know, tomorrow's another day. Wake up, put my headgear on, and get to it. Never question it. That's probably just being stubborn and, and never saying no, right? And that's the wrestler mindset. The best thing that wrestling helped me in in football was learning how to put someone down. Mm -hmm. It's okay to put someone on their back, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but it also taught me the insane capacity each of us have mm -hmm. to work. Walk yeah. us through what conditioning was like <laughs> at Penn State. <laughs> Oh, man. Conditioning was, um, I'll walk you through a day in the life of cutting weight. I think that's where you really go into deeper waters in your brain and where you really start to build that mental toughness. Yeah. Not advised for anybody um, here to yeah, cut weight. Yeah. Let's <laughs> just say that right now. We're not advising this behavior. This is just what it took for yeah. Mark to be great. I mean, I look back and you just it's just something we did. You didn't know any different. right? That's what every wrestler did. And I always say, I wish we never cut weight. If everyone in wrestling decided, let's just all stop cutting weight. And we'll all wrestle the same people still, but we're just going to go up two weight classes and yeah. be fat and happy, right? Yeah, yeah. But everyone's looking for that slight edge. It's what, what's that slight edge? For the longest time, it was I could drop a little bit of weight and I can have maybe a little strength or, or weight on a, a younger weight class. So you're starting at once, you wrestled at 165, right? Well, two, first two years in college, 157. Okay. Then I actually bumped up to 174. Ooh, wow. Um, I was kind of tall happy. for, yeah. <laughs> and that was, it's funny, that was the best year I had was when I was wrestling 174. Maybe that's not for everyone, but for me, my conditioning was never really good when I was sucking too much weight. Right. Right. Like I was cutting 15, 20 pounds and I'm six foot. I'm taller for a wrestler cutting down to 157. Like my gas tank would go by the third period. I just, I couldn't do it. So what was that cut? What would you do? 
I mean, it was a lot of running, sauna suits, ellipticals, uh, saunas. Here's the tricky thing about everyone thinks you got to do more, more, more. But the trick in wrestling when you're losing weight is to just break a sweat and then do as little as possible to keep that sweat going. Mm. Okay. Right. So you're not out there trying to go harder. It's not like I'm going to run 20 miles. It's like I'm going to go on the elliptical with like three layers of clothes on, sauna suit. I'm going to just do enough to break a sweat. And then you just want to keep that going. Mm. So it's like really optimizing, you know, how little physical because you don't have a ton. Right. You don't want right. to burn yourself out. But I got to lose the weight. And now one of the things I learned in wrestling, too, is when you lose, it's on you. So okay. there's an accountability yeah. factor. What was your toughest loss that taught you the most? Man going to put this on record, but, um, <laughs> you don't have to say his name. You don't have yeah. to give him the credit. You know, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, my senior year in high school, for sure. I lost one match. I was the number one seed going into it. And, um, I just wrestled not to lose, you know, and that was a mm -hmm. saying of my, my dad will eventually hear this and he's going to love it. Cause he's a big sayings guy. We were extremely close. Everything I am today is because of him, but we used to always have this one saying, it's like, don't wrestle to, to lose. And that means like, I'm not going out there. I'm not in the zone. I'm not going out there to win using my best stuff. I'm being defensive. I'm not taking risks because, like, I'm just scared if I make a mistake. Uh, but, yeah, that senior year in high school and finally made it to that final, you know, match state finals. And I just kind of choked like a deer in headlights. And it was the best and worst thing that's ever happened to me, right? Because going into college, it humbled me a ton, made me want to work harder and reach all my goals in college. But it also was like I got to get my mind game right. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't there in my senior year. You know, wrestling is obviously a physical sport. Football is a physical sport. But – I think I learned in college mm. and then especially in the pros, most of it's won from the neck up. No doubt, yeah. So yeah, talk a little sure. bit about that, that mental game. Especially at the college level. Uh, when you're young, you know, when I first started middle school, high school, you could still have some physical strength advantages or, you know, technique advantages. But in college at the D1 level, everyone's that good. Mm -hmm. right? like we've all been wrestling since we were four years old, right? We all have the same physical strength, conditioning, uh, technique at that point. It's all mental at the college level, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a lot of visualizing, self-confidence, building a, a community and network around you. Like when I was younger, I didn't really realize, and I had phenomenal coaches, but like how important they were at the time. Yeah. Your network, your support group. My father is just, since the day I can remember, it was always like, sit down as soon as we got home from school. Let's talk about your day. Let's talk about your goals. Let's talk about tomorrow. I think just having that support system, building that mental mindset, confidence, all of it goes into what you put out on the mat. And usually that's what separates the great from just the good. Are you a good visualizer? I, I found that when I was trying to visualize, I just wasn't a great visualizer. I would have to like almost do it with my eyes open. Yeah. Are you a good visualizer? Yeah. I think I'm all right. But I mean, I look at some of the greats now that are still wrestling. I feel like I was an amateur compared to what their like their goals and like what they knew they were going to accomplish. Right. So I still had we all have a lot of self doubt, but man, some of those guys are just rock solid. They're like, there's nothing ever shaking me. I'm gonna be an Olympic champ. I'm gonna be a world champ and they're still doing it. That's a Tom Brady difference, I I believe, as you know, like regardless of where the game was at, it's like uh, he was never scared. Like, yeah. And that had nothing to do with, like, his physical ability. It was insane. Like, when we played him in the AFC Championship game, we, I mean, we were beating their ass pretty much all game. Mm -hmm. And then he got the ball with, you know, a couple minutes ago. And it's like, oh, shit, like, he's going to score here because yeah. mm -hmm. he's just done it. And, yeah. like, he yeah. doesn't care about, like, the consequences. And yeah. So how did you bring the mentality? Now you're at First Trust Portfolios. You're in the mm -hmm. finance mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but – you could tell by the blazer. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the luxurious beard, you know what I mean? But the transition is tough, I think, for people yeah. of all kinds in all workplaces, but especially yeah. for athletes. You transition from a highly intense athletic and academic area. You had to go to the real world yeah. where you couldn't throw in half Nelsons and you couldn't hip toss yeah. people who were yeah. talking to you wrong. What were <laughs> keys for you? In that transit, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we know that, right? But they don't. Forward. You know what I mean? But, yeah. But what were key pieces for yeah. you in transitioning from this is who I was, mm -hmm. and now I have to create who I'm going to be? Yeah, it's, it's funny you ask. I have a, a group chat right now with a couple of my former teammates, my best friends. We talk every single day, all day, and we talk a lot about the transition from because a lot of athletes struggle with it. And this is not me downplaying by any means, but like it was not hard for me. And I think part of that was because I didn't reach the goals that I wanted in college. So it was just continuing on what I didn't achieve yet. Mm. And like, I wish more people 
Like it's it guys, it's not that hard. Just everything you did in whatever sport it was, but for me it was wrestling, which is extremely demanding on all fronts, just transition that to your, your career. Right. So what did you do then? Did you get the series six? Did you start reskilling yourself? Yeah. I mean it's at first I actually started in the wine world. So I worked for a company called the EJ Gala Winery, but I was always in sales, right? So it's just it's work ethic. Like you don't gotta be the smartest person. You can certainly help those things and get certifications and whatever that may be, but more times than not, it's just showing up and working harder than the next person. So for me, it was just long hours, putting in the time, being willing to travel, commute, move around. You know, like all of those things were my edge. While you're working harder than that next person, mm -hmm. what's the most common thing you've seen for that person preventing them from success? The monotonous, getting through it, right? Like some people just get so bored and or I can't do the same thing every single day, all sports. But again, wrestling is just every day you wake up and you got to cut that weight, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> like if, if, if you don't have that mental attitude of like, I'm just going to put my head down and get through it, which wrestlers, Navy SEALs, like all those types of, they're that tough up there. That's just getting through the day to day. Not that many people can do that every single day for 10 years straight, right? So just putting your head down, rolling up your sleeves, doing the hard things that no one else wants to do. Going from different industries mm -hmm. as you transitioned out, how did you land here and yeah. how happy are you in the role? Obviously, it's been sales roles, yeah. but you're in the carton role that you're in now. Yeah. What, what, what attracted you to that? A lot. So I got here because my best friend, shout out to Aaron Ansbach. He wrestled for us at Penn State, absolute savage, national runner up. <laughs> and uh, the company I work for now, they're, uh, they're very family uh, focused. They're very uh, sales incentive focused, which is a lot like wrestling. So I finally found a company where I could kind of mirror, you know, it's all on me on how my success does. Of course, I use my team and my support around me, but it's the only company I've ever worked for where your work ethic is directly uh, correlated to, you know, your, your rewards and your, your pay, uh, that I love that relationship. It's very black and white, but I ended up here. I was in the wine world, always in sales. I, I started my own company with a buddy for three years. We did that until we sold. And then finally at that point, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I re reached out to my buddy, Aaron, who was trying to recruit me forever. And I'm like, Aaron, I don't know anything about finance, but what's this first trust company all about? At that point, I kind of had an idea because I saw what he's been doing for, you know, at that point, like six or seven years. Hmm. So don't be afraid to reach out to the people that you know or the people that you have two or three degrees of separation from because uh, that's kind of how you level up in the world after you know college and all that type of stuff. What are three keys yeah. to being a successful person in sales? I would say obviously the, the work ethic, so working harder than the person next to you, but uh, following through on what you say to your clients. Again, it sounds so simple, but so many people don't do it. If you say you're going to send an email tonight, send an email tonight. You know, if you say you're going to follow up in a month, follow up in a month. So just following through on what you say. And then I would say uh, building that family or network within your company can help out a lot. Mm. Too often, and even when I was in my 20s, I thought I could do it all on my own. And maybe that was a negative from wrestling that yeah, I always yeah. thought, like, I'll figure it out on my own. But it's a lot easier and you level up quicker when you lean on and you have a, a supporting you know, network around you. And that involves your company. So whether it's, you know, in sales, I have a, a, we call it a pod. Like I have, you know, four business partners that we cover the same territory. In my past jobs, I've just done it all, tried to do it all on my own. Leaning on them has made it so much easier and it's a lot more fun. What's one piece of advice, personally or professionally, that you would love to share with the audience? I would say find your North Star and just don't lose sight on that. Like that is the end goal at all points. It might be hard to find. Maybe the best way to go about it is think about what you want to do at the end when you've quote unquote, made it and then work yourself backwards. But always having that North Star and everything you do will make sure that it keeps you on track and you don't get distracted on things that'll prolong that moment until you get there. And what's your one piece of advice? As you mentioned, all of us have had self-doubt, have it at times, something I had to fight throughout my career. What process would you advise people to take when they're feeling that self-doubt? What's something they should do in that moment? Reach out to your, your friends and family. They're the ones that know you best. They're the only ones that are going to call you out on your BS. You know, they know you. So, uh, again, lean on that support system that you have, your best, closest friends and family, the ones that will be honest with you. Well, Mark Friend, friend of the yeah. program. <laughs> so <laughs> great to have a Penn State <laughs> legendary wrestler here with Thank us. And congratulations it. on all your current success. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate I had a great conversation. You, awesome. Thanks.